Good morning, everybody. Today uh, we have the talk uh, by Dr. Capitalina Diaz Martinez, and she will talk about sex and gender analysis in research and innovation. Uh, Dr. Capitalina Diaz will be properly introduced by Isabel. Please hear. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for being here again. Um, I always say good morning, even if it is not morning, unless in Spain, nothing happens. That, that's good. So um, it's a pleasure to, to have today with us Capitolina, Capitolina uh, Diaz Martinez. Thank you very much, Capitolina, for being here. Uh, she is full professor of sociology at the Universidad de Valencia, where she, said she set up the still unofficial gender and science group which has a dual research and teaching uh, character. Uh, she was uh, the first director of the Women and Science Unit of the Ministry of Education and Science in 2006. Then she was science advisor in the Spanish representation in, the, uh, uh, in Europe, REPER, in 2008. Then she was uh, Director General for uh, Equality in Employment in the Spanish Ministry of uh, Equality in 2008 as well. And she chaired the Spanish Association of Women Scientists and Technologists. That's the first time I say that in English. It's Amit uh, from 2013 to 2016. She has carried out teaching and research states at the United States in the universities of Stanford and Harvard in Mexico, in the UNAM, in Argentina, in the Universidad de Comahue, in the Universidad de Buenos Aires, and in Cuba, in the Universidad de Moa. She has also been lecturer in gender master's degrees at the Spanish University of Vigo, Salamanca, Castellón, Oviedo, and Valencia, her home university today. Her main fields of research are a sociology of gender, gender and science, methodology of gender sex analysis, sociology of education, public policies with a gender sex perspective, and equality and power relations in the family. In this field, she has authored, co-authored more than 100 articles, books, and book chapters. Among the most recent, um, I'd like to, to uh, pay attention uh, to two of them that are, of, of the ones I've read, especially, and I have lot, a lot, um, I, I do, uh, um, I do uh, tell you, I mean, invite you to have a read on that. They're really interesting. The first one is hidden gender biases in big data. Is man to women as work is to mother? It's really very interesting, paper, really. And then the, the second one is uh, that, that I'd like to, to, I mean, to, to highlight here is women of science, women in science, science with women in uh, 2018. I love, uh, I've loved many of them and these two especially. Her research, uh, recent research projects include parental authority, custody and visitation, gender pay gap in universities, gender pay gap and gender care gap, and gender bias in big data. At this respect, she's the driving force behind the creation of a software called CABI, which is on the test, to correct gender bias in language which has been developed in, in, by the computer engineer department of the Universidad Iberoamericana de Mexico. Her talk today is based on her own online course on the inclusion of gender and sex perspective in research and innovation, which she teaches in more than a, a dozen universities and research centers in Spain, in Latin America, and also for the H2020 at the Horizon uh, Europe project. Thank you again, Capitolina. it's a really, I mean, it's beyond a pleasure for us to have you here. And the floor is yours. Good morning. It's me who, who says thank you because it's, a, it's really an honor to be here and be presented by, by someone like Isabel because it's, a, so thank you very much, Isabel, for these kind words. And thank you to Pepa Masegosa that unfortunately is unwell today and cannot be with us. And also to René Dufarc that helped a lot with some technical problems that we have early in this morning. So I will proceed to, to try to introduce you to the main ideas 
about the importance of including gender, sex and gender analysis in the research and, uh, and to give you some hints about how to do it. Uh, this is to pass or I'll do it, I'll, I'll use that, okay. The topics that I will try to cover today is si uh, sex and gender analysis in research and innovation is this strange word, yeah? Uh, considered as a political issue. Uh, after that, we will see for a few clarif the clarifications of a few concepts about gender equality, gender dimension, gender discrimination, etc. Uh, and the center of our lecture will be the inclusion of gender dimensions in each of the phases of the research process. It, that means the inclusion of gender dimension in the content, content of the research. Probably, although this usually is the focus of my work and my lectures and my course, probably in astrophysics is not so uh, common to do that and also easy as we will see, but we will work in another line and how to take care about the gender equality in the people not in the content, but in the people. I will talk about the two things, but I know that for you will be more common to the last point, gender relations in research, uh, referring to the team. So there we go, because there is not a lot, a lot of time for so many things. Uh, the realization that gender equality and research quality, the two things together, right, that they are combined and both of them are interconnected and together influence results and outcomes. This realization has mobilized new interest in gender issues among policymakers and science, and among le science leaders, especially in Europe, the USA, and Spain, among many others. Canada is another of the ones that have a lot to do to say about that. We will see a few legal dispositions, uh, mainly of the European Union and a few ones about in Spain that are many others that are similar in both. Um, I, I start from, from, from the legal dispositions uh, just to, to convey the idea that uh, what uh, we are talking here is not a um, result of an ideology or a feminist ideology or something like that, that is embedded, of course, but it's, they are legal dispositions. The EU has in, their, in its norms to, to practice gender equality. In Spain, the same. So we will see the spirit in their own words of the European Commission and Spain that are the, I imagine, the main founders of our research. So it is important for us to comply with the norms of our research founders. Uh, she is Maria Gabriel, that is the commissioner, the European commissioner uh, responsible for research. So she is the one who decides about the call, but well, she is the last one, is the, the one who, who signs the course, but is, is the one that is behind, is the main, the top person behind the research in Europe. And when, when uh, Hor um, Horizon Europe started in 2002, she said, I am determined, determined to step up our efforts on gender equality and support more talented women in research and innovation. Also, I am committed to ensure that the gender dimension is fully integrated in research and innovation, supported by Horizon, Horizon, Horizon Europe, and that is fully acknowledged in the European research area. So these are the words of the main person in, in Europe in relation to research, with a lot of millions, to be spent in research if we follow the lines. How Horizon Europe understand sex and gender analysis? Horizon Europe is the most advanced framework program. Uh, in fact, is the ninth framework program, but the, 
the last one with being numbered was the seventh. The eighth was called um, uh, Europe 2020, and this one is Horizon, Horizon Europe. Horizon Europe is the most advanced framework program until now for the inclusion, inclusion of sex and gender analysis in research. I said until now, but because I hope that after 2027 that we'll start a new one framework program will be even more advanced. It addresses sex and gender perspective in, sorry, the content of the research, the composition of research teams, the composition of evaluators, advisors, managers, etc. Here I make a stop. Uh, the, um, the European Commission has also opened the pool of researchers to become evaluators. I really um, tell you that will be very good to go to the appropriate page and include yourself as evaluators. Spain has less evaluators than other countries and less women, less uh, women for uh, scientific areas like yours. So it will be good to, to have some of you as evaluators. Uh, also, uh, um, includes um, or addresses the culture of research institutions, and we will have a few words later on about that. Uh, the activity of female researchers in business is very interesting, the Commission also, and how to, uh, when, we, um, when we have uh, startups or we have a business with uh, scientific basis to include gender dimensions too in that, and the role of equality in excellence, because there has been demonstrated the relation between research quality and equality. So gender equality is considered in the European Union as a political principle, as a cross-cutting principle that aspires to eliminate gender inequality and, and this is new, its intersection with other socioeconomical inequalities through research and innovation systems, including and addressing unconscious biases and systemic structural barriers. It's the first time that one of the framework programs considers gender inequality in interaction with other socio-demographic socio var uh, variables like uh, age, ethnicity, uh, race, um, gender identity, etc. So is enlarging the scope of the equality. And also it starts to, is the first time that addresses unconscious biases that we will talk later on and systemic structural barriers of the institutions in which we work. And we will address that in a few minutes when we talk about the gender equality plans. Um, for framework program for first from the, this, frame, this framework program, the uh, Horizon Europe, is the first time that um, gender equality is considered compulsory by default. So in principle, every call, uh, every call, uh, all the projects presented to any call should include gender equality in the content and in the research team, except that the call has a particular flag that says this project does not need, doesn't mean that it's forbidden, but does not need to include the gender perspective. Probably many of the astrophysics projects will have this flag, probably most of them, because you don't work mostly for the objects of your research are not people, are not uh, plants or animals, uh, sex plants or animals, and do not have direct implication in any sex uh, life being. Uh, so for that reason, <clears throat> probably you don't have the flag, but uh, you, don't, you, you don't, you have the flag, that allows you do not introduce gender, uh, sex and gender analysis in the content. But 
you are obliged to consider sex and gender in the in the team, in the research team, and in the uh, administrative people the, the, that work with you. And but I insist, it's the first time that is compulsory. Until now, uh, in the previous uh, in the previous program in the, uh, Horizon 2020, uh, um, there was not any information about to be compulsory. And only the ones with the flag were compulsory the introduction of sex and gender analysis. Now is the opposite. By default, it's compulsory. Addressing the gender dimension in research and innovation implies taking sex and gender into account throughout the research and innovation process, throughout the whole process. And we will go slowly about that. Gender dimension in teams. Gender balance in the, pro in the project research teams will be strongly encouraged and will be taken into account in the gearing gender prioritization of proposals. These are um, the commission words, and we will talk about the prioritization in minutes. Research have the possibility of self-identifying self according to three gender categories, women, men, and non-binary. This is Again, new, never before were considered that besides men and women uh, researchers, we can have non-binary researchers. So the and uh, non-binary counts uh, in the 4060. That is the, the, the minimum that is accepted to, uh, to by the commission to understand that you have a parity in your research team is to have at least, at least a minimum or a minimum of 40% 40 of the less represented sex. So to have a 40% between women and non-binary or men and non-binary counts, counts the same. Um, gender dimension, I, I prepared some hints. Until now, I was copying uh, or making a, yes, a copy of, of the commission words, and this is why I, I usually put a, the label of the commission on the, on the bottom. But now this is my own ideas. Uh, so some hints. Besides the parity in the numbers 4060, it's important to take in account for any, for any foundation agents, it's important that you take in account when you write your proposal, the compatibility of timetable and calendar with family and personal responsibilities. So you can write that in your proposal, that you will have not meetings before such and such time of the day or after such time of the day, because people can have responsibilities and cannot participate if, if, it, if the meeting is too early or too late. And this will be considered positively. You will have a point for that. The gender bias, you, you should consider the gender bias in professional interaction. And I will add some hints later on. The balance distribution of tasks. If we don't think, and we, we don't stop ourselves to think, mainly if we have a position, decision position in the team, in the teams, sometimes our, our sexism, because the sexism is, is, uh, in court, in, is embodied in our way of thinking, because we live in sexist societies. So nobody is free of sexism, either women, men, even feminist people. Uh, sexism is there. So if we don't stop and don't pay attention, uh, sometimes uh, I will say something extreme, but the female researchers look for the coffee and the male researchers look into the computers. I know that it's extreme, but if you think slow, you think every time that you distribute tasks, you should think what you are doing or you are, or you are receiving tasks. Uh, and all, also the order in publications. Uh, this is something that is uh, not, uh, is usually is not considered, but it's very important. Every not, everybody knows when the importance of the signature order. Yeah, so it would be good uh, to have written down eh, how you will implement 
the signature order in the several outputs that you get from your research and taking gender into account, obviously. Uh, we will see how the situation is in physics nowadays. And also to take into account the risk of sexual harassment. That uh, is one, uh, probably you know the literature about that in astrophysics, but there are, mm, there are many, uh, many publications that refers to the risk and the risk and the reality of sexual harassment uh, that have um, cut off the, the careers of, of female researchers. And finally, the provisions of a space and experts to attend to sex and gender related complaints. You need to have in, uh, in it is necessary to have in the research centers, places and people to whom uh, uh, people who suffer for any sex complaint could go and be well received, uh, accepted and treated uh, in a proper manner. And the European Commission also find that gender balance as a tiebreaker and excellence criteria, the two things. So when two uh, proposals have the same number of points and the commission only have money for one, the tiebreaker is if the one, the, they have four, five elements to decide who will win. And one of the five is gender balance in the number of participants. So it two proposals with the same number of points and one has a male IP, a PI, and the other has a female, will the female one will win or one that has two, two direct, two main persons, a male and a female, uh, or a team balance. And the excellent criteria that is really important if your project receives um, the label of excellence, um, they, you, they use the content in the research. If you include in the uh, sex and gender analysis in the content of the research, you have more points to get, uh, uh, well, in fact, it's a, it's a criteria. So you can only get excellence, the excellence label if you include sex and gender analysis in your research. Uh, in your case, if you are researching, if you are doing a research in a call that, that do not force you to use sex and gender analysis, but you explain why you don't need to use that, and you explain why the, the, the provision that you have taken for equality among the members of your team, you can also qualify you for excellence uh, criteria. Here you have the ones of you who have field forms for the uh, Horizon Europe, you probably recognize this uh, page in which they ask you, describe how the gender dimension is taken into account in the project's research and innovation content. If you do not consider such a gender dimension to be relevant in your pro project, please provide a justification. This section is mandatory except for the topics which have been identified in the work program as not requiring the integration of sex and gender in research and innovation content. Remember, the smart telephones are not so smart. Remember that that, that, that is the quest, question relates to the content of the plain research and innovation activities, not to the gender balance in the teams. And they, and they give a piece of information. Sex and gender analysis refer to biological characteristics and social cultural factors, respectively. For guidance on, for knowing how to do it, you can go here. If you, if you press the previous link, you go to that publication case that is Gender Innovations 2, how inclusive analysis contributes 
to research and innovation. This is, you can get it the book or you can get it uh, on uh, online. And this is a report prepared by a team lead, lead it by Londa Schiebinger, that is also the, the one who created this web page. And uh, this is especially created for Horizon Europe and is full of samples about how to include sex and gender analysis in your research. So my advice is to go there and to look to see if you find any sample, any, sam any research sample uh, close in any way to your research and your topic and just follow what they did because they are the positive samples. Also here in this web page, you have um, in environment, engineering, and science, health, and medicine. So in these four topics, you can look and see if there is any sample about research close to yours and hints about how to do, uh, how to include sex and gender analysis in your research. So they are really two good tools. Um, as I said, uh, uh, the, one of the aims of the commission is change the culture of, of our institutions. And for that, uh, it's compulsory uh, that uh, all, uh, each member of a research team proposal uh, is uh, her or his um, institution has a gender equality plan. Uh, is that is compulsory? So is um, uh, because the the uh, the Commission, the European Commission, uh, has learned that after many years pushing and putting money in uh, uh, improve the content of of research uh, of uh, the content of the research. Uh, inclu uh, with inclusion of gender and sex analysis, uh, we haven't gone too far. So uh, now uh, are insisting that it's important to change the culture of our institutions. So for that, they demand uh, that the institution uh, should come uh, should come uh, to be more than neutral, uh, gender friendly, and for that we'll need to have a gender equality plan with these four mandatory aspects. So probably the, well, probably not. I'm sure the, the physique has a gender equality plan, but I don't know if this center has it or not. Uh, but if it, it if has it, uh, probably doesn't follow these four demands that the EU has. So it will be necessary to revise our gender equality plan in order to comply with what the uh, Horizon Europe is demanding us. So the four things are publication. That one is, uh, I'm sure that you already have it. Publication, a formal document posted on the institution's website and signed by the senior manager. Esto probably you have that, but probably it's not so easy that you have that. Dedicated resources, a commitment of resources and expertise in gender equality to implement the plan. So must be someone with, no, with an knowledge in gender equality that follow up the plan, that see that the plan is not only something written and published in the website, but is being implemented. And, and it cannot be anyone, need to be someone with a minimum of gender knowledge. Also, data collection and monitoring data on staff and students disaggregated by sex and annual reports based on indicators. So if we, if we start this year, we need to know to have this disaggregated data. Probably the plan should have a aim to increment the number of women in such and such positions, etc. So next year, we will need to collect the data and see how far we have gone during a year. And the commission, we need to know that. And finally, training. It will be necessary uh, sessions of sensitization uh, or training 
on gender equality and unconscious gender bias for staff and decision makers. So here, I assume that we are just working for the fourth uh, square, at least for staff. I don't know if also for decision, yes, also for decision makers, but probably there are more decision makers that is much more difficult to reach them. Yeah? For instance, my own university, the University of Valencia, I, mm, we, are, we have for many years, maybe six, five years or more, each year I teach a course that I, I taught it here three years ago, a, a quite long course, 20 hours, five face-to-face uh, -face and the other 15 on remote, and uh, for researchers. But if along two years, the um, equality unit has tried that the, the rector and the vice rector had a meeting with one of us to discuss a few of these things. And they never have a gap in the agenda to, to put this meeting. It's impossible. Apparently, the, agenda, the diary of the, of the rector and the vice rector are always occupied for more important things than gender equality. So will we not they will not fool that uh, square. So this is in relation to culture. And I think that we are finishing here. Spanish legislation, let me see the time for a minute because we will finish up. Uh, ah, yeah, it's true, sorry. Uh, the limit of the talk is uh, 1230, uh, vale. Um, just, I, I, I will go fast. Um, in Spain, from 2007, we have a normative to include uh, the gender, the sex and gender dimension in research. Uh, here, uh, in 2000, uh, March, uh, in the um, equality, in the Ley de Igualdad eh, and Equality Act, uh, Article 20, uh, we have these demands. It is necessary to optimize statistics and studies in such a way that they include the sex variable. Uh, they establish and include new statistical indicators that provide for a fuller understanding of the differences in gender. Design, the, the statistics should design and introduce the indicators and mechanisms required to ascertain the effect of other var variables. Like I said, the other sociodemographic variables that combine with gender. Uh, we should take sufficiently large samples, revise the data available, taking gender into account. Most of them do not affect the type of research you do, but just for you to know that from 2007 in this country, we should have that in consideration. But is anyone, and this is an organic, Act so is the higher level of laws in our country be behind the law next to the constitution. So uh, and we have that in that law, but is anyone checking if the research in Spain do that? No one, unfortunately. So our laws is, are not bad, too bad, but uh, the if looking if we implementing them, no so bad. Review and, as necessary, revise existing statistical definitions. Uh, if you, this is similar to what I showed before uh, of the uh, Horizon Europe. This is the Spanish uh, call, the Plan Estatal de Investigación. We have the point G is the point about gender equality. G1, gender equality in content. G2, gender equality in research teams. And it, specifies what we should consider. And in the annexes of each call, there are few pa several pages indicating us how we should look in our proposal for sex and gender research. And we go on. Just the, just the title. The, in the USA in 2000, 
they create this the national research ¿cómo es? Uh, national uh, science national science national science uh, national science foundation no? Thanks. National Science Foundation uh, created in 2000 this program, Science, and has been renewed in 2021. And it has been, uh, has been given uh, millions of dollars to help uh, many, many research programs all around the country that introduce gender equality. I should said, said, say that they are more focus on having more women in the research teams and in decision 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 positions than to change the content of the research but they try the two things the in canada also have several programs particularly in life sciences i said that we will talk about some concepts there we go um just a little note about current sexism because many people think that we today don't have sexism, like don't have sexism in the academia, because the sexism has become more subtle and less direct than used to be in the past. Modern sexism is characterized by denial of personal bias and prejudice toward women, a general conscious belief in the equality of the sexes, but unconscious attitudes that foster non-support for programs and legislation helpful to women. So it's very difficult to find today in the academia people that openly says, say that women are less valuable than men or things like that. But in the everyday practice, women and men make unconscious decisions that marginalize women. Uh, this is the results of research. I develop uh, one, one concept trying to, to understand what happened. What, what is how this uh, unconscious bias uh, work? Let me see that we have this young man, could be also a young woman. Let me say that he's a scientist and he comes to a lab and she, he sees that. This is what he sees. But what he interprets could maybe he could interpret what we will say what he is seeing but also it is quite probable that he sees inverted commas that was he sees that it's exaggerating but uh, this is what happened with unconscious bias we women and men look at a woman doing a man hard difficult scientific work and what we are seeing when we see a man doing this hard male scientific work we are seeing the proper thing but when we are seeing a female it's not so clear that we see the same maybe we see a combination of all of that but when we see a man we don't see a combination of the sexy man or the combination of the uh, good father, et cetera, et cetera. Hmm? So this is the basis of our unconscious bias. So everybody's bias because bias and stereotyping is part of our way of thinking. We always think in a stereotyping way and a biased way because the life is too fast and we need to take decisions continuously. We go walking for the street, we cross with people, and we take decisions about who are they and how safe is to, to be close to them or how nice or whatever. So life is really fast. We need to take decisions immediately. In many occasions, it's a survival condition. So we biased and we stereotypize. So the question here is that doing science, we need to be conscious about the kind of bias that we could put in our way of thinking okay, and how to correct this bias. So it's nothing, nothing to, to be ashamed for being biased because it's the, it's the way of our cognition system works. But uh, what is a shame, what is a shame is not realizing that this help 
some people, mostly men, and a particular type of men, and make disadvantages for other people, mostly women. I call that gender agnosis because there is a, a neuronal illness, a neuronal condition that, call, that is agnosis, that is visual, visual agnosis, is uh, something that happened to people who doesn't have any problem in their vision system. They see correctly, their eyes work properly, but the connection between vision and interpretation is broken and they cannot interpret, interpret correctly what they are seeing. So uh, this is why I call it agnosis. Eh? Uh, gender, in this case, gender agnosis is a kind of uh, metaphor, yeah? It's a... Uh, Mm -hmm. I said before I said that the uh, to talk about the signature order. Uh, in astronomy and astrophysics, women are about are only about the five, ten percent in editor-in-chief roles in major mainstream journals, keynote speakers, chairpersons of important conference sections, distinguished award awards recipients in major conferences and meetings in astronomy and astrophysics. In the last 40 years of academic records, it is not difficult to find no woman in such roles at any given time. There is a permanent gross objectification and harassment in the form of micromachismos. No time to go deeper. Here you have two new books or two quite recent books about the about uh, how sexism still pervades uh, physics and astrophysics. So if you have interest, uh, you can have a look at them. Uh, for me, uh, it's not so easy as it will be for you, but uh, could help you to realize in your everyday practice um, how sometimes you, um, you are sexist in your work, or you can recognize that uh, some treatment that you receive is a sexist treatment, although you have been so accustomed that you have naturalized it. So it's just time to say, stop, don't, fo don't follow that line. Uh, let me see if I see this definition. Oh, sorry. I will jump. So I will jump this. Um, I can pass this to you, to any of you, and you can distribute it for the people. And so I, I just, uh, well, benefits for gender equality in research. Research has shown to be benefit, benefit or more equal participation, which improves collective intelligence, improves cognitive diversity in problems. So, in problem solving gives a more realistic understanding of the contents. It helps make research and innovation both relevant and responsible to society. And here we go to the focus. And I decided to present the focus, not explaining the content, but just giving you a checklist about uh, what you should look when you write your research proposal or when you think about your research design uh, in order to include sex and gender analysis as far as you can. Let me see this checklist. Research focus. First question you should ask. Are gender and or sex concepts used in the research? If yes, have those gender or sex concepts been explicitly defined? It is clear which aspects of gender and or sex are being looking in the study, it refers to the content, of course. If not, do you consider that this absence is a significant limiting factor? Given the existing knowledge in relevant references, are these concepts present? Should gender and or sex factor be considered? Probably most of your research, and the answer will be no, and you will not have uh, li relevant literature that include that. So doesn't apply all the time to your research. I understand there are people from the Institute of Biology also probably following the, 
the lecture for them is much more relevant. So I address him mainly to the people of this institute, but since they are these other people, this is particularly relevant for them. And sometimes it's for you, because sometimes your research ha has a relation, we will see in minutes, with uh, human beings or other living beings. If you can, I will jump. When you, for, you formula, formulate your question and hypothesis, do research questions and hypotheses refer to gender or sex in relevant groups of phenomena? Literature review. Does literature review cite previous work which support the existence of lack thereof of significant differences between women and men, girls and boys, plants, animals, or tissue, tissues? Does it point to which extent have it past works taking into account gender and sex? Also, probably it's not so obvious in your field. Methodology. Is the sample population balanced enough to catch sex or gender factors? It is possible to gather data disaggregated by sex or gender. Are inclusion and exclusion criteria well justified regarding gender and or sex? Is the proposed data collecting method appropriate for gender and sex research? Is the analytical focus appropriate and rigorous enough to catch gender and sex based factors? So with this checklist, uh, you even if your research uh, has this flag that say that you are not obliged to use gender and sex analysis in the in the in the content. You could have a look at these at these uh, uh, questions of the checklist because it will help you maybe in some ways. Here you have the Pasteur quadrant. I suppose that you are familiar with that, the Pasteur quadrant uh, for specifically. Uh, I adapted it from the uh, German Foundation to, to gender analysis. Uh, pure basic, when you do pure basic research that is not directly or indirectly linked to people or animals or plants in the object or methodology or the research. If you do that, that probably is your case. No, you don't need to do to look for gender analysis in the content. If you are doing pure applied research, that is a potential application to people or living environment is foreseen, but is not directly addressed in the appropriate uh, methodology. Could be yes or not. Used inspired research, a direct investigation of the interactions between technical solutions and people. This will happen to you. Sometimes because, because things that you have discovered to be used for searching things not related to living beings to could be applied to analysis or studies to living beings. So in that case, yes, partially yes, partially no. And finally, when you always need to do it, yes, yes, when you do research responsible eh, and innovation, innovation applied to society, assessment of public and environmental exposure to new technologies and manufactured products. Yeah, probably to research about the, the garbage that there are all around the earth could be in that line. But I don't know, you, you could look for examples of your own field in this quadrant. And uh, it, it will be interesting to see doing any type of this research, how many women a man, a man you have in any quadrant in which you are, you can count the number of women, women and men that are there. Uh, I will give you some samples of positive, positive actions. Uh, just you, uh, just to, to give you an idea about how to uh, include uh, something towards gender equality in your research. For instance, naming of new stellar objects with female names or female scientists better. This is something that can be done. And I, I, although your field is, uh, is strange to me, 
uh, I understand that uh, recently you are discovering technologies to that allows you to move to to discover new stellar objects. Do you, I don't know if you call stellar objects, yeah. Uh, but so there will be so many that probably there is the there is just the moment to compensate for all female all male name objects of the past. So we can start to call the objects with feminine names. Uh, nomination of women researchers for high status positions. Uh, is Mm, it's uh, usually you know that is is the what is called the all boys network. Eh? The all boys network make makes that um, men select men, uh, the digitalize men, and forget about women, about nominating women for good positions. Uh, and uh, the last point is um, belongs to a new. I I start I starting now um, a activism uh, activity <laughs> about a, a project about a demanding address to women and men, but more to men than women that do not participate in any panel that does not have at least forty percent scientists, female scientists. Um, I think that um, nowadays, if not good enough that someone sends you an email saying, would you like to be part of the scientific committee of such and such? And you say, oh yes, thank you very much. I am very uh, grateful. I said that today we need to say who else is in the committee or in the panel. Yeah? And you see, and there is not, if it's not 40, at least 40% 40 of women to say it formally, I'm sorry, I will be delighted to belong to that committee, but as far as it has, at least 40%, 40% female components. I think that we should start to do that, male and female, because I think that is a practice that, that usually we don't have. And it's the same if that someone invited you to be the main speaker of a conference. Okay, I am a male and I am the, the speakers of the uh, first speaker. And who is the last speaker? Is a male or a female? So if I am a male, I would like to that the last one will be a female. So is this composition. So I think that these are positive actions that we can take on account in our activity for now on. And is the the association I just proposed to the AMIT, that is the association that uh, um, Isabel, Pepa, and I don't know if someone else here belongs to, Asocia Asociación de Mujeres Investigadoras y Tecnólogas de España. I just proposed this activity to start with this campaign about that no less than 40% scientists. So the, in, in English, they have a name for that. They say, in a state of say panel, they say manel. When the panel is full of man, so it's a man. So we, in Spanish, I think that we, at least my creativity is not enough to produce a name like that, but we don't want to have more pan, manels, yeah? And uh, I must confess that I am, the, the reason that moved me to, to organize this campaign, that was just last week ago, one week ago, was because in the last year we have been complaining for many of these manners. But just last week I learned, uh, as Isabel said, I am a sociologist. Uh, in Spain, we have the Spanish Federation of Sociology, and it has um, entities in each autonomous community. So the La, La Asociación Andaluza de Sociología will have a conference next uh, month in, in Córdoba. And they have they have nominated a scientific committee with 15 people, 14 male and one female. In sociology, <clears throat> that they are as many women as men. This is not acceptable. So this I said, enough is enough. We should start a campaign and insist on that. So this is the first occasion that I have the possibility to say it openly, but so uh, 
the campaign is on. It started today. Uh, how to mitigate microaggressions and the different, uh, differential treatment of women by both men and women? Because women, we, we do the same. We don't ask who is in the panel. And we sit in the panel and see 14 men and said, well, it was too many, but this is all. No complaint. So how to mitigate it? Through awareness and education. How to raise awareness and educate people? Training faculty to be aware of how they might inadvertently treat women differently and be advised to ensure equal treatment, making sure that, and this is our daily, daily, diario, como decimos, a, that, each day activity, we, we look that. The tasks in the lab are assigned, assigned fairly. Every participant has equal access to equipment. Every participant can share their ideas at in group meetings and during experiments. We must take care of that. They are people very outspoken. So they are always occupying the verbal space. So we need to take that on account and say and facilitate that, that everybody has their say in the debate, in the, in the working uh, meetings. Faculty are equally available to all students and participants. Departments need to have a, a tough and vocal stance regarding their refusal to tolerate a work environment hostile to women. It's not very easy that we see that. And accountability for maintaining a bias-free environment. How to create a women's friendly climate? In the research team, pay attention to fair, similar to the ones that I said previously, fair assignment tasks, authorship order in publications, participation in conferences, timetable and calendar compatible with personal life, clear criteria and order for promotion. And this is all. Two examples, I will fast. Uh, this is a toilet uh, for space uh, crafts that uh, took then many years to develop after women in their, uh, how do you say, simulacros? When training to fly in the spaceships and they didn't have a toilet in which they could, eh, eh, without, gra without gravitation, eh, to, to go to the loo is not easy. And if the loo is prepared only for male, and we are anatomically, are not the same, as you know. So it happened the same with the suits. So suits for women, suit for men, toilet for both sexes. Uh, two examples that shows us the effects of uh, the absence of sex and gender analysis. One in the life sciences. This is what a hair attacks feels like to a man. Uh, is some a kind of pressure in the in the chest, left side, left side, and uh, like a burning, and the same through the left arm. This is how the eighty percent of women feel like a um, a heart attack. Uh, deep chest pain, discomfort, pressure, or squeezing like there is a tone of weight on you, unusual upper body play, pain, etc. Bra breaking out in a cold sweat, light uh, mm, dizziness, uh, nausea, unusual fatigue, shortness of breath. So if you suffer something similar to the first picture, you immediately recognize that you are suffering a heart attack. Uh, but only 20% approximately of women have those symptoms. The other 80% have these symptoms. But the men, please pay attention, approximately 20% of men have the same system, system symptoms that women. So pay attention if you suffer, some of them, just one, etc. You could be suffering also a heart attack. And what happened uh, in the, in, in the Faculty of Medicine today in Spain and in the 
uh, mid exam uh, papers and the symptoms of her attacks even today are just that they don't consider that women have the other symptoms what are the consequences that they are women dying unnecessarily for her attacks they don't recognize them and when finally they go to the hospital in the hospital they don't recognize that so when they finally understand that this woman or this 20 this member mm, that belongs to the 20 percent of these symptoms are suffering a heart attack either is dead or the her or his heart has suffered a mm, important necrosis and what happened ah i thought that i have an example oh sorry is the only one that I have. Uh, I thought that I have other example in physics, but doesn't matter. Uh, in the same line that the European Commission, in 2016, all publishing houses, all European publishing houses of scientific work have a meeting and they said that they have social responsibilities because they are ones that publish our research. So they should do something for stopping uh, research that doesn't include sex and gender analysis so they took an account took a decision that is they call it SAGER sex and gender research guidelines eh? and they said that each uh, researcher they give guidelines about how the research the the original should be sent to the to the publishing house i i will only set the the titles because i don't enough i don't have enough time and you will have that but you they ask you to reconsider the title the introduction the methods and the results and you know that at the final we said the discussion also the discussion they produce this chart in which they said topic of the study are sex and gender relevant to the topic of study? And you will say yes or no. If it's yes, you continue. If you say no, you should justify. And this all along your uh, original work. You and only. And the, 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 the agreement that the publishing houses have get is that before to send to um, to send to the double blind to the two researchers to see the to evaluate your research before that the the um, the publishing house should look for that and if your research doesn't follow all these paths they send it to you and you will revise it or it will not be accepted it will, they don't spend the time of evaluators evaluating your research so it's also important not only to be financed, but also to be published to follow the sex and gender analysis. Uh, probably you can know, you know the Waterloo, I don't know, Charter for Gender Inclusion and Diversity in Physics, but they also uh, make extraordinary declaration that they are really like it. People of all genders are equally good in doing excellent science and deserve equal opportunity. Diversity contributes to excellence in science so that the full participation of people of all genders will enhance excellence in the field of physics. Both uh, thought and action are necessary to ensure equal participation for all. The attainment of equal opportunity should be measured by outcomes. Thus, as long as the percentage of women in the next level of advancement does not equal the percentage in the pool, equal opportunity cannot be considered to exist. Long-term uh, change requires periodic evaluation of the progress and consequently to make the change if it's necessary. This is important, not only in, in make the things work, but revise if they are doing properly. And with that, I finish with 10 minutes extra. So thank you very much. Muchas gracias. If, you see.
So uh, everybody can have because we are quick here, but we are forty. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. But then I have to do this is here. Um, thank you very much for the interesting talk. And um, I to talk at the same time to the audience here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, the, uh, these people know I have been director of one agricultural science institute in the last eight years. That means I had read all evaluation for project from the Plan Estatal de Investigación, all evaluation during eight years. As far as I can remember, there, there were no mention to sex or the gender aspect in this positive or negative evaluation. And then I think it's very difficult to encourage people to make all these things. I completely agree when nothing happened at this level. Yeah, you know, yeah. and also probably uh, some people from my institute are hearing or streaming your talk. And you mentioned plants. I am working with plant stress. And I would say it's quite difficult to include in the content of the project some sex or gender. Aspect. No, gender, no, but sex. No. Yeah. Sex. Yeah, well, they are, you know more about plants than myself, <laughs> obviously, but uh, most plants, uh, most plants have both sexes. Uh, yeah, but but in, yeah. but in any case, the, mm -hmm. the idea is that mm -hmm. you should include mm -hmm. as many uh, the the uh, correct proportion mm -hmm. of all the sexes present. Mm -hmm. So if there is a plant that has five, because they are five, they are plants with five sexes. Mm -hmm. uh, so if there are plants that have five sexes, you should include a appropriate proportion of each sex in mm -hmm. your analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, your five sex. If they are at this most common, just two sexes, mm -hmm. you should include both of the two sexes in the research. And mm -hmm. whatever you do, do it with the two sexes mm -hmm. in presence, mm -hmm. is the idea. And about that, uh, for years and years and years, we are not considered the content of gender in research, although the law says that uh, in 2000, 2006, 2008, I think, during that period, I was working at the, Isabel said that before, I was working at the Ministry of Education, at that time it was Education and Science, and we managed to include uh, five extra points mm. for researchers, research, uh, research that include sex and gender in the analysis or equivalence or a pari parity in the teams. Mm -hmm. It was controversial, mm -hmm. and uh, but we did it. And uh, it was on the Boletin Oficial del Estado, but was no one taking care mm -hmm. that in each evaluation meeting, someone considered that. Mm -hmm. And was not possible, and was not possible, that was mm -hmm. what I advised, but I, my position in the ministry at that time was too low, was the, the, the director of the uh, Gender Equality Unit. Mm -hmm can imagine that the gender equality unit in, in the whole Ministry of Education and Science was very little thing. Well, well myself and my secretary. So mm -hmm. this, this give you, gives you an idea. And um, we said we need to include a checklist mm -hmm. uh, for the evaluators to when they read when they read the when they evaluate and read the proposal just to see to have the checklist and see if they, they really consider sex and gender in the content, yeah. yeah? In, the, in the case of plants, sex in the content. Uh, but uh, we never managed that. Finally, in the, uh, maybe uh, recent 2018, something like that, uh, uh, was during the um, Rajoy government, we managed to produce and the Secretary of the State uh, accept a checklist with 10 points to give to each evaluator to have it, this uh, list to evaluate the content of the of the of the research, the content, the research and the sex and gender content of the research, of the proposal. We produce the 10 points, we publish it. Up, 
is supposed that each evaluator should receive it, but nobody was there to be sure that each evaluator received it, and nobody was there in each panel to say, what about the gender dimension? Nothing. So we have been working with that nearly 20 years, nearly, not as much, but uh, 16, 17, 18 years, and we didn't manage to do that. We managed to do that in the in my community, in the in Valencia, La Comunidad Autónoma de Valencia, and for, for three years, four years, it worked. So we have this uh, check 10 items checklist, and, and we have an expert in every field. So there was the ordinary evaluator. They evaluate the, the project plus an a gender expert of the field evaluating only the gender and sex and content. And if they, they with the checklist, they give positive, they could have five extra points uh, over the points that receive for the rest of the evaluator. We have that in the, in the for I think that four years in Valencia, and now they stop it. There are two years now without that. Nobody knows why it disappears. Nobody has any idea. Or oh, they even say that they, we didn't take out that. So there is no one responsible for the disappearance of the five points. And now we are again, this amid this association, again working uh, to try that they, uh, at least in the course of the Valencian community, we will have again the five points. So it's really, we are working on that. For the European Union, it takes it on account. Mm -hmm. So if you if you send a proposal to Horizon Europe, it's, it's pre you should consider that. In Spain, we don't manage. Mm -hmm. the, the la agencia, the Spanish uh, uh, agencia of investigación, uh, has also a long declaration of that. Mm -hmm. In the Spanish proposal, you have the point G one yeah, and G two. Nobody mm -hmm. pays attention. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a problem that we have in this country. It's not only with gender, it's with many things. We mm -hmm. have quite good ideas and we have quite good laws, but mm -hmm. we never think that laws should be implemented. Mm -hmm. We need to have a kind of, um, the French uh, said, um, perras guardianes, perras guardianas eh? of, uh, of gender. So it's like a, we have a kind of a gender commissar in each meeting mm -hmm. saying gender is not a gender equality is not considered here is not considered there i don't know mm -hmm. because um, something so important as five points in a, a, a in 100 five points is a lot so but if it's no one there to do that i don't know what more to it, do. Could be it, better, it could be even better because we we had a project with four notes the, uh, the research project from the ministry, and uh, we were in total we were thirty, considering the, the four notes, so the whole project, we were about thirty something percent women, and in one of the notes we were mostly women, and the only comment we received about that was that we had gender imbalance in our note because we were like women. Yeah, right. Uh, this this happened very often. Yeah, the I. I know a group of um, of uh, women in physics, women in physics in my university. All of them are women, five of them. They sent the project to, to FECIT and, uh, and the FECIT uh, didn't uh, approve the project because the five researchers were women. So uh, we never hear that a, a project was rejected because all the members were men. Never. That if there are five women, apparently this is so visible, it cannot be good science. Yeah. They are uh, full professors, professors, etc. And now, uh, when, when, the current, when they were writing the current, um, uh, the, la the last approval law, the act of science, la ley de la ciencia, that passed uh, two weeks ago, uh, appears two weeks ago in the Boletín Oficial del Estado. Uh, we send uh, from Amit, I, I request that, to send to the minister the, to change the idea of parity 40 60, as 
for because it could happen things as yours of the physics in, in Valencia. They said minimum 40% females. So it's better to say minimum 40% because once you have 40% other fields, maybe. So, so exactly. So you should we should change to say at least 40% women. And with that, everything passed. Okay, yes. thank you for the other. You, my comment uh, goes in that direction. That uh, I think that those initiatives are uh, very helpful, very, very good. I appreciate them. Sorry. Uh, however, they are not applicable to all the fields. Um, I'm from planetary science. I have to see that uh, uh, I've seen, for example, in the authorship, uh, I can see all my papers, most all my papers. I am the only woman, not because I, I, I didn't pay attention. I promise. I pay attention. Mm -hmm. Say, oh my God, why am I there? And also to, to make the jury. Uh, the, for the thesis, I found very, very difficult to find women. And I, as a woman, as a scientist, I don't like to put women there just because they're women, if they don't have the expertise. I think it's not correct. Uh, so this is, this, is, this is my criticism. My worries is that regarding, uh, for example, the, the mandatory um, aspect of including uh, women in the, in the project, my worry is that uh, since in, in some field of, of science and physics, or my field in particular, I talk about myself, we are very, very few women, we will be over solicited <laughs> because all the, 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 the people writing projects will ask us to be in the, in the, in the team. And mm, we could say, yes, uh, we can be in all the projects, but we don't have the time, resources to work on all the projects. So we have to be very careful to, to, to see in which field we are talking about. And, uh, and not to to put too much charge on the few women who are working in some fields. That's my worries and criticism at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that you are right. And they are fields in which this is uh, this is difficult. But first, if you have first, you need to have the to be aware of the importance of having women. And once you have you are aware of that, you go you go to a conference, you read things, and you find more women that you have expected. Maybe not in your center of research, but just in the next province or in the next country. So if you are aware of the importance of having women, you find more than you think. Second, uh, very often we have men and women of the same level and the same quality, but the men manage to be more known, yeah? And so the first names that come to your vision are men. So you need to think twice and look for women. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you look for men, young men, for your research team, young men that are starting their research. Maybe they are even not postdoc. And you, you think, it looks interesting. I should bring it to my team, my research team, because this will be the beginning. What? Okay, think, well, we have enough, enough men. I will look for a good woman, clever woman that can do that. So if we are aware, you will have a percentage more, I don't say the equivalent number, but more women than you think. This is the first thing. And the second, I think that should be a, a, uh, a note, an asterisk saying, uh, in my research, in my research field, this is the number of women, and you even can give numbers. Can so give it's only 15% of female full professor, 20% uh, of professors, et cetera, et cetera. So you give the numbers and say, taking that into account, I only can make a team with that and that. Okay, and right. saying that, I think that people will understand that. Doesn't matter that the normative said 40, 60, or minimum 40. I think that. I hope. Okay, I'm afraid that it would be a, exactly, a limitation for projects and projects yes. have to go ahead because if we don't have, so at this stage, I think in the next 20, uh, 10, 20 years, the situation will improve. I hope so. I hope but so. at this stage, yeah. that's not directly applied. And to at the same time, I should say that there are fields uh, with too, mm, too much females. So in those fields, <coughs> probably you have 100% females in order to not be dismissed because these, these people that see too many women, you can say that you can, if you were in one of those fields, for instance, uh, uh, teaching, uh, pedagogy, whatever, you can say in this field, 95% of professors and full professors are women. This is why all my team 
is being managed. It would be good to have a better parity this is over. So I think that we will work, I hope that the people is flexible enough to understand that. But this is a real problem. And also it's a problem that these women, uh, these few women, and with uh, few women, these women are too demand and too busy in too many things. And they, if they should also, the institutions provide to support these women for not being involved in some administrative tax, et cetera, because if not, they do not have time to attend to many demands for the research from research areas. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, a question. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I'm a postdoc, so I'm not part of the commission. So my uh, day by day is uh, reading paper and writing paper. So I was thinking what to say. Thanks for the talk. And uh, would be, uh, for example, worth. And I mean, when you write scientific paper, the only uh, free text is there in the acknowledgement. So it, uh, so I work with Galaxy with no gender, but uh, perhaps it's worth to add a few lines in the acknowledgement saying that this team is composed by 50-50 mm, or not. So when you are uh, actually writing the paper, you can have a, a sense that you are excluding and or including a uh, woman and men. So it would be worth to add these few lines uh, in, so we can see it every day, not yes. only in big projects, but maybe that they are once a year or something like that. Yes. So this yes. kind I, of thing can help. Yes, I think that this is a very good idea. And it's also important that although most publishing houses ask for us to say just the surname, just to put the first name in order to visualize the few women that are in research. So uh, I usually say that uh, although the although you demand the initial, I prefer to use the full name in order to visualize women, and they should usually accept that. And with that, it's important. And in this, uh, this in the same line, this um, campaign that I am starting around the forty percent, I am thinking about to have a kind of logo that the people who works. Uh, with parity, just put that logo in order to recognize that it's like when you put a logo saying this uh, work in respect the environment or has been is uh, is recyclable or whatever. The same logo that recyclable, a logo to say that you have parity in your team, something like that. If there is a uh, code, uh, for example, for financial project uh, for gender balance, we can also have a track easily to mm -hmm. our papers if uh, there are many women or not, because sometimes also names are not so easy to understand. We, I mean, we are international teams, oh, yes. so to have these so, and yes. all the yes, 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 in the, the statistics. So. Yes, in the just a field note, uh, field note saying this team is composed by 30% female or 80 percent or whatever oh, well, yes. yeah. or we we support the if it's a european thing we support the gender equality program of the eu and we have such percentages in our team yes would be i think that this is a really good idea thank you for <laughs> Any other question in the audience i have one myself i think that i mean it's just more a comment than a question i think that we doing uh basic research for all of us is difficult as uh, Sally was saying to to have an idea how to include that in the content because the content does have nothing to do with the whatever but the the whole process is important so the team of course but also for us and especially for astronomy outreach is a great way to connect to people and I think that we have a great work to do there in outreach and 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 we have a lot to do to show that we can reach, even if we don't have yet, um, the quality that we want to have a quality and, and we want to show that the role of women is important. And it's, it is, uh, I mean, it, it goes to both women and men, and especially to men, because um, still their voices are heard strong, stronger than us, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it's in the line that I said, name the new, the new things that you discovered with female names, say how many women were in the research team, all these lines. So we need to visibilize the women that are working in the field. 
because first is real, is a truth, is is a justice, because it's to recognize what is doing the job. Secondly, more girls, we see women doing this kind of jobs, and so more, we will have more women in these fields. And then people will evaluate us as, as good as all male astronomers. Yes, uh, we should do that. Okay. Is there any other question? So uh, thank you very much again, Capitolina. It's been a pleasure for us to have you here. Thank you. Thank you.